episode is finally one of my faves and a little good one for season one my little pony the best night ever and i have a little surprise for you guys at the end of the review okay <laughs> the episode begins opening with cantaloupe grand gallop and gala about to begin pinkie pie is jumping excitedly humanly using the trampoline to show her enthusiasm which is crazy or any pony trust me my my dad actually worked hard to make me a trampoline with other bat ponies, they worked really hard making anything for my sister. We would jump and able to. I mean, my sister enjoyed flying and all, but I love jumping on my trampoline. I love trampoline. I love, love, love them. I should go get one now. Mom. Okay, okay. Thank you, Sally. Sorry. She's waking me up in reality. While well, Travis Parker's learning a new spell and Twilight's being annoyed by all the commotion, she's bouncing around. Anyone could be annoyed. Randy comes up to stop Pinky, not wanting the Pinkie Pie Pinky's dress to be stained with sweat. Once Applejack and Flush, I remember to meet up with the rest of the ponies. Finally, I catch her latest spell, transforming an apple to s transforming an apple that Spike placed on the ground into a carriage and take it from the gala. Ooh, if I know this part well, it's from Cinderella. One of my favorite stories. Well, not exactly. Sally Locke likes Cinderella. She wants to dress up with a nightmare night. Mom, don't tell her that. Tell them that, please. Sally, it's just a for That's my little girl. She, you know, she gets embarrassed. Mm -mm. She proceeds to turn a group of four mice that Fluttershy had brought with her, and Twilight request into horses to pull the carriage. The spell nearly perfect except for the horse's face still had mouth whispers. <laughs> it's a terribly cute. Thanks to over lessons, though, however, she scared him away. With some eyelash battling, Rarity convinced two of her stallion neighbors, Karma and Unlucky Clover, which they really like Rarity, which I really, really hate these two. Not if I hate him, but sorry, I hate him because, well, they're just male back guys, brown, background guys. It's too bad you're only back, the only guy who gets to talk a lot of Spike. I wish they would get themselves their relationships done. I hope season 9 they'll do that. Hmm. In any case, the pull the courage instead. As they, get, as, they get, as they get into the courage, Spike is already making plans to show Twilight's friends the highest of their hometown. They all say that they will be busy, but promise to hang out with them later. And several friends enter the castle grounds. Oh, wait, oops. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't sleep well last night. <laughs> they were all getting ready for the, for, the, for the great galloping gala at Rarity's house. And Spike was very enthusiastic about showing him around, around a candle lot because she, he knows that it was going to be fun there. But then they all said that, we don't know, maybe they'll see. So he hopes that they all spend time with them. But all we, but all you know, guys know, the main six have their own ideas of fun. And now, as the seven friends enter the castle grounds, the galloping, the grand galloping gala is already underway. The ponies sing the grand gala song reveal what they want to do during the night. After the song, the excited ponies split up into order to make their dreams a reality. Leave a spike in dust. Oh, poor little spiky wikey. Twilight Sparkle meets Princess Celestia, who invited her to be by her side the whole night as they talk. Very day and night, I'm Prince Blue Bud. Oh god, I hate him. He's like a guest on clone! Mm. Go shoot him. Felicia followed the beautiful sound of a stray mellow lark into a private garden. Abadek opened her booth filled with all kinds of apple snacks and quickly sold her first item an apple pie to Wonderbolt named Sword, who, I might add, is a perfect pair, perfect pony. And stallion for our info dash. I ship it! I ship it! I ship it! On the way to meet his partner, Swan dropped the pie and remember to drive the same and recognizing her from the clouds of competition. And yes, continuity! We got continuity! I know, I know. It's so, I know it's silver. I know, I'm just saying it in a different way. We got continuity here, baby. The one boat's known as Spitfire asked her to hang out with them in the VIP sector. Pinky by Arrow the Balloon at the at the ball, and instead taken in the sighting floors and guests in the band. He always seems to answer in usual fashion, expressing her love for the gala. However, she sees that all the attention she gets is far more strict and stern than she anticipated. She awkwardly becomes quiet. 
Yeah, just how I felt when I went in the parties when I was growing up. Uh, one time my mom tried to host a bad pony dance party for my sister. And, well, I kind of summoned that kind of embarrassed my sister. But in the end, my sister said I was the most funnest pony there. That was a long time ago. Technically, I was a young little filly. And I couldn't help it. Because all the bad ponies were flying above me and I couldn't join them. At that time, I was still learning how to control my unicorn magic. Because there was no unicorns there. I had to learn magic myself. None of them were unicorns. My mother was my mother was earth pony. And the rest of my family were, well, bad ponies. So, I had to learn things by myself. Yeah, even then I was... You know. Something on my own. In any case, the Randy meets Dream Pony Prince Blue Blood. Should I say, I'm going to call him Gaston. Yeah, Prince Gaston. He deserves the title. After the news, she finds a rose in the wall garden and points it out to him. Instead of offering it to Rarity, he places it on his suit, claiming it to compare his eyes. Meanwhile, the garden floods like quickly fall the melody, but leads to Mr. Greenhoof, an elderly groundskeeper who, who simply whistles with his work. She pauses as she interrupts him flee in opposite directions before finding spines in which one she approached him. Only she seems scurrying up. The Pegasus blame herself for such a loud mouth. Watch again and befriend him. But no matter how polite or quiet she can not control someone. Okay, here's what I think. I think that the animals were taught to be polite and be good, and they were taught to never interact with any of the ponies around them. Alright, okay, okay, I know. No lines. They were taught to never interfere with any ponies, or they were shy and they were afraid. Because I think Celestia, I think no one doesn't let any pony near the animals. And animals are afraid of the ponies because, well, that's all I know. My reasons is that they were raised to not be around ponies. And Flush, I, poor little Flush, it doesn't know that. Dang it. The Rainbow Dust is not far much better. Her idols are too busy talking to the others. Party goes to pay attention to her. Try to attempt to convince with Celestia, but desperate the prince's best effort to do so. The endless line of guests requires her attention. At the apple stand, Applejack had one sole item in the apple pie to sort. Through the entire episode, to the point, refused to give up, and go makes a vow. No, I'm waiting all my life for this moment, and even I'm not going to let it slip by, and the last thing I do, and I'm going to make this the best night ever, they all said. And, of course, rather than wait to talk to the princess, Twilight instead joins the greetings and the Arab guests, but she quickly go tired of constant hoof shaking. Pinky and I decided to live up the part by means necessary by convincing the order to play for Pony Polka. Oh, God. Oh, my stars. Jazz decided to perform a few more tricks and staring by a stage and say for what I'm supposed to see. Raymond asked an accessory party guest in the air, just as the fast catching him, but still she failed to attract the attention of the Wonderbolts. You know, Apple Jack used some of her apples to stumble a party of things, helping him up, but it offered him some of the food. But the victim refused, and Rarity keeps his compassion hope and see blue Gaston could side. But Gaston stopped her from stepping on a water puddle. Desperate her expecting to lay his coat over the puddle from across, he used her scarf for set. As they reached the edge, she implied that Gaston opened it, but he turned his nose in the air, and Rarity is forced to open in the garden. Flush I tries patiently and hope that the animals will come to her, and Emily she was going to set a trap for them. That even failed. As the gala continued, Rarity and Gaston approached Applejack's booth outside, and Rarity ordered the two apple puddles. Disappointed once more, a prince expects her to pay for food. Applejack intervened, giving them the fritters on the house. Upon tasting the fritters, Gaston quickly spits out the food and realized that his world's had cut to common old carnival fail. He returned to the party for food for preparing taste. Rarity scowls at Gaston and the students of her friend's perfectly good wear. Then Applejack realized that everyone's eating the horse Duval rather than her apple treats. As she attempted to dress it up her fare, she decided to cart the cake into the ballroom and sell it there. Pinkie Pie and the attempt to add flair to the party, boring as it is, accidentally a stage drive into the cart. And flinging the cake into the air, the cake fly right toward Gaston, who uses Rarity as a shield to keep himself from being hit by it. Rarity finally loses the tempo, shakes up the cake like this. And peace and two bluebirds. <clears throat> Water. He retired accidentally and bumped in the room. Quickly. 
centerpiece statue, which begins to topple over. Rainbow Dash tries to use the opportunity to get noticed by the Wonderbolt, successfully catching the statue. Unfortunately, she can't balance it and bumps out of the ball when the storm collides. Toppled over, Dang Doom taking the rest of the column with it. When the dust settled, the centerpiece statue cracked and broke. As Celestia and Twilight returned, into the ball, see the destruction Twilight is in the comments that things cannot get any worse. The moment the stampede of wall guarded animals burst through the door with being him and enraged on it. You're gonna love me! Or should I say flesh hey well, You're gonna love me! I cannot do that though. Great honor the animals to love her, which the blue with the ballroom in absolute chaos. Celestia had only one word at by her student, run. Prominent Twilight to call for friends to follow her. On the way downstairs, Rarity drops one of her glass slippers. Reference to Cinderella again. Pinky appears that Rarity's prince will be able to find her, but she doesn't want anything to do with him. So she crushes the glass slipper and runs off a beaten path. Meanwhile, as a dejected Spike demands another donut while sitting in an empty con in his favorite donut shop, give me another one. But Spot, you had so many donuts. I say give me another one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Trial and her friends, as a tattled gala dresses, walked in through the door. They are greeted by a server, sir, Pony Joe, who remarks right as long time no see. Around the table with a large plate of donuts, the Devonians tell Twilight to be spiked. The story of the night probably him that sounds like the worst night ever to which they all play. Yes, it was. And now Twilight still hopes that Prince Celestia isn't upset with the moon in the party. Celestia enters the donut shop right then with the announcement that the night has been the best gala ever. Informed that ponies that the Grand Gala is always awful. Which is why she was hoping Twilight and her friends and mommy would have lived and think it up. The pony concluded that being together made a horrible night into the best night ever. It appeared to apologize to Spike for not including him into it even. Even though Spike even knew that that's true. <laughs> and now, time to mention some. And now, my thoughts. I love that the fact that Pinky tried to be a terrible at the party but couldn't do it. And Rarity tried so hard. Prince Gaston, but in a failing. Wondered, wondered, and wondered would not know that Rainbow Dash tried her best to impress, but never could. And Twilight, you know, you could just talk to her all you want. You were a prized pupil and student, so you wouldn't have to talk to her at a party. You could just teleport there and say hi to her. Duh. And Applejack, you said you tried so hard. Why don't Why didn't you just make fancy apple juices instead of regular country fare? But then again. You are a country pony, Applejack, and I never get upset at you. And Spike was right. You guys just needed to the, be together. And Celeste, of course, was her usual pomp self, as always, but full of surprises, as she always is. And basically, I love that they had the resemblance of fairy tales in here. And these are what that has been for the fairy tale themes. The episodes had several fairy tale recurrence a magical apple carriage, and the mouse being turned to horses. Accidentally leaving a glass element? That's from Cinderella. Mr. Green from Mantian to go and say he likes to whistle while he look reverence to Snow White. The golden apple tree Spike mentioned at the beginning of the episode is shown up but it could be a number of fairy tales. The golden bird. Her brother's grimace, of course. Was the plan to catch damage? Complete men at left. There's someone echo like, I catch you, my pretty little dog, too. <laughs> Princess Celestia created an arc of twinkling stars over Castle. In the same manner as the Walt Disney doo 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 doo, you know what I mean? <laughs> and the song sung before the gala sung like ever after of a fairy tale theme into the woods. And Rainbow Dash tried to stabilize the statue and accidentally knocks over a roll of pillars from Hercules when he was trying to save his, um, save a pot by knocking it over. <laughs> yeah. And we had several songs in here at the gala. Rarity's dressmaking song. I don't think there was a dressmaking song in here. Hmm. I don't think there was. Maybe it was a deleted. Oh, wait, that one, of course. But it wasn't mentioned here. <laughs> then there's the Grand Gala Yellow song for He's a Jolly Good Fellow. Yeah, all these songs were for, based on. Also, the Piggy Dance song was originally 10 for the episode, but it was cut due to time. However, the song was used for baby cakes. And now for some little. Now for some tips and info about how this episode would ever do. According to the episode writer, Amy Keeney Rogers, the show script is generally 33 pages long, but her first strip of the episode was only 39. Some of the songs were fitting for the episode, but they were cut in time. Longer version, Piggy Dance to Chicken Dance, was one of those dances to have come before the Pony Polka. 
I thought you were referring to the adventure that would appear in the game. My little boy, Fenty Man, has discovered that Vincent had debuted in Hob World two weeks before the episode premiered. The image of the show, the ponies wear the dress, and suited for success around the Mon table. A plate of half eaten donuts, they were untidy. Very untidy. The sign of fancy branch pinky pie spot stage were later used as a Luna Eclipse wear and scarecrow costume. Color different instruments are different. The relation classified as grand piano who plays with an upright piano. Rest in with harmonica, bow instruments, and fiddles, and the harp or the banjo. Grand and notes both for the stallion ponies pulled the carriage. This episode was the third we have harp ponies fan favorite marathon leap of hearts and hoops day. <sighs> and there's my review. I hope you guys enjoy it. And as for my surprise, I will show you it in a minute. First of all, I'd like to say I hope you guys enjoy the se the first season of My Little Pony. Next season will be season two. And I will do an episode on Discord, but even though I don't like Discord. In any case, I hope you ponies out I hope you bronies and piggies and other friends of mine enjoy the video. <sighs> in any case, I better go take the little smoothie out. Gia, and whoop, 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 whoop. See y'all. And, oh, Gia, did you make a mess? I better get to it. Bye. Greetings, all. This is what I will be doing for my Halloween video, dressing up as different ponies. I'm caught from the snake. Then I'm Maleficent, the evil of the mall. Ha, 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 ha. Get ready for it. Now you never forget. As I fell... Show you all the review I'm going to do for Halloween. And I'm ready to play some soccer out here. Come on, who wants to join me in the game of soccer? Come on. Anyone? Maybe Rainbow Dash? <laughs> and now you'll see all the glory reviewing I can do. And see, I'm Twilight. And we'll see a lot of cartoons based on Halloween dolls, maybe. And yes, I'm dressed up as Raven, my doll. No, it's my daughter. And next. Well, you see me dressed up as my favorite aunt, my favorite poem, my favorite brown pegasus, sister, Ingros. And now you see, and now here I am as a ladybug princess. I couldn't resist it. I love ladybugs. And next, you see me as, of course, Rose Quartz. Because, hey, Rose Quartz is one big lady like I am. And plus, I didn't get hair right. And next, I'm Marceline, the vampire queen. Can't wait to spook up some trouble. Some really dark trouble. <laughs> and next, I'm Mel. Daughter of Maleficent. It would make sense, right? I mean, seriously, I worked my butt off getting the hair done. And next, I'm Star. Yay, Star versus Evil. I'm ready to fight some bad guys. Including Tuffy, who's just a jerk. And next, I'm Raven Queen from Ever After Happy because my mother is, well, the queen herself. And I'm ready to fight some bad guys. I'm Captain America. I was going to sue Spider Man, but nah, I did Captain America. And next, my last, my favorite hero. Melina Earhart, one of my favorites, fired me. I can do the best I can. And oh my gosh, yes, I am Coraline. Because A, I love the movie of Halloween. Plus, the classic. I might review that. <laughs> and I'm a witch. <laughs> so enjoy this lovely Halloween, my friends. And lastly, I am Batgirl. I save the world from Joker and all his stupid friends. And last, <laughs> Margaret from... Regular show. So, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. You'll be seeing more of this in October. See you guys. <laughs> okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel. And remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. <laughs>